So why, why you always tie? Well, today at Highline Academy, we're gonna answer all those questions. Stick around. So what we're talking about in why, why you tie, what that term actually means is we're talking about a three pop bank with a Y primary connection and a Y secondary connection. If you want any further information on what exactly I'm talking about or you're not clear on what a Y primary or a Y secondary connection is, I'm gonna put a link in the video right here that's gonna link you back to a previous video that I did that explains it all. So the tie portion of what we're talking about in why, why you tie is talking about the primary neutral connection. And specifically, what they're talking about is tying down the primary neutral connection to the circuit neutral. And I know it seems a little bit redundant, like of course that's what you're gonna do. But on the other bank, the Y delta bank, we say Y delta you float. So in that connection, you can actually float that primary neutral connection. So to better understand why we always tie the primary neutral connection down on this bank, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the shop we're gonna vector the connection out, we're gonna come back outside, we're gonna build it, then we're gonna energize it and see exactly what happens when we start floating that primary neutral connection. So here we are, we're gonna vector this bank out and I've got my three pieces of information up here. And if this is kind of foreign to you guys, I'm gonna put a link in the video which uh, talks about these three pieces of information and how it's the starting point for every transformer bank that we build. For everybody else that is familiar with all this, um, you can see here I just picked a Y circuit. So I've got 4160. I picked a grounded Y just because that's what I had out there. Um, it can be an ungrounded Y, it doesn't matter. But for this example, I went with a grounded Y. My nameplate is a 2400 4160 Y, 12240 secondary, which means that my transformer obviously is going to need 2400 volts. So in order to hook this transformer up on this circuit, that's gonna require a Y hookup. I've got a 12240 secondary, and the customer needs 12208. And as we've gone over before, the customer needs always determines the secondary hookup. So 12208, remember the rule delta divide? Does this divide into this evenly? If the answer is no, it is not a delta because only deltas divide evenly, right? So 120 does not divide evenly into 208, therefore the secondary connection is going to be a Y. So right here I've got my primary circuit. It's a 4160 grounded Y, so A, B, and C phase, grounded neutral in the middle. With this transformer bank, 12240 with a 12208 secondary hookup, I'm gonna to have to alley cap bad dog or parallel the secondary coils of this transformer. So since I have to parallel the secondary coils of these transformers, rather than have my one and two on these outside two bushings right here, I'm gonna to have to use my X1 and X2 bushing. And again, if you guys aren't familiar with where the X1 bushing sits and uh, the standards there, I'm gonna put another link here that talks about polarity. So for this transformer bank, you can see I have my primary numbered out, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way across. My secondary side, I know that on these transformers, they're, they require 2400 volts, which is underneath, that is below the 8660 requirement to make them subtractive. So these are additive transformers, which means X1 is right over here on each one of these transformers. So when I number my bank out, I'm always gonna be from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six. But since these transformers are in parallel and I'm using my X1 and X2 bushing, my one, instead of going here and here, my one is actually gonna be where my X2 bushing is. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now that I've got my bank numbered, now I'm able to actually start vectoring. So the first thing, I'm gonna take my one and two coil and I'm gonna throw it between my A phase and my neutral, with one going to A phase, two going to neutral. 
Next, my 3-4 transformer, I'm going to feed that one with B-phase. So there's my B-phase transformer. 3 is going to go to B. 4 is going to go to my grounded neutral. Next, my 5-6 transformer. So if you probably could guess, it's going to go, <laughs> it's going to be fed by C-phase. I'm going to have 5 going to C-phase and 6 going to my grounded neutral. So just to go over the connection, I've got 2, 4, and 6 all tied together going to circuit neutral. I've got 1, 3, and 5 going to A, B, and C phase. So the angles that I have to work with now on my secondary side are my 1, 2 angle. So my 1, 2 transformer, here's the secondary angle. 1 is on top, 2 is on bottom, just like my primary. My 3-4 transformer, I've got my 3-4 transformer, 4 is on top, right? Meaning it's on the uphill side of it. So 4 is up on top of 3. It's on the uphill side of that angle. So I'm going to take that right here. 4 is on top, 3 is on bottom. And my 5-6 transformer. Again, 6 is on top, 5 is on bottom. That's the rule. That's how you make this work. So I pick up my 5-6 line, 6 is on top, and I stick it right here, right? So 6 is on top, 5 is on bottom. So the next step is I'm going to look at which number my x1, or my phase, that I'm going to make coming off of this transformer right here is. So my number 2 is my x1, my number 4 is my x1, and my number 6 is my x1. So when I take these vector angles and I start placing them in certain areas to make my Y shape, I have to consider where X1 is so that my 2 is pointed out toward the phase. So 1 is on top, 2 is on bottom, right? I pick up my 3-4 line, 4 is on top, 3 is on bottom. And if I put it here, that would be tying my 2 and 4 together like my common neutral, right? Just like the primary. So I can't do that because I want to make 4 my phase. 4 is x1. I'm going to make x1 my phase. So 4, I'm going to pick that up. It's on top. And I'm actually going to stick it right there. So I've got 4 and 3. Just like that. And lastly, my 5, 6 line, right? 6 is on top. 5 is on bottom. I pick that up. I bring it over. And I can make that Y shape just like that. Six on top, five on bottom. So to look at the connection, I've got a one, three, and five all tied together. And that'll be my common neutral. I've got a two, four, and six all being my respective phases. So I've had a few questions come up about when I talk about voltage and inches. And what in the heck I'm saying, like how, what does that, what does that have to do with vectoring and all that? When we're dealing with vectors, these are where the voltages actually come from. This is how we build the 208 potential in this bank. So mathematically, if each one of these lines from 1 to 2, 5 to 6, 3 to 4, they're 120 volts, right? Well, rather than say volts, let's say inches. And the reason I'm saying that is this. If I take a 120-inch line and another 120 inch line and I connect them at a common point and I separate them, meaning the break angle right here is 120 degrees. If I do that right there, what I end up building is from four to two, this actual distance ends up being 208 inches. And that is true all the way around this vector. So this is how we build the 208 potential with three 120 volt or 120 inch lines. So now the only thing left to do is to hook it up. So if we look over here, we're going to start with our primary. I've got a 1 going to A, 3 going to B, 5 going to C. So let's go do that. I've got 1 going to A phase. I've got 3 going to B phase. And I've got 5 going to C phase. And lastly, I've got my 2, 4, and 6 all tied together at a common point. That's what they're doing right there when they're all touching the same point. 
and they're going to the central or the common neutral. So I've got two, four, and six all tied together going to neutral. Now looking at our secondary connection, I've got my one, three, and five all tied together, and those are gonna be my common neutral. So let's do that. So I've got one, I've got three, and I've got five all tied together coming down. Those are my common neutrals. Next, I've got two, four, and six all coming off those transformers, and those will be my phases. So I've got two coming down, that'll be a phase. Four is coming down, that will be a phase. And six is coming down, that will be a phase. Now if we look at our vector over here, from one to two, I've got 120. So one to two, 120. Or from neutral to this phase, 120. Six to neutral, I've got 120. And from four to neutral, I've got 120. From two to four, so from two, to 4, I've got 208. From 2 to 6, I've got 208. And from 4 to 6, I've got 208. So now that we've vectored it all out, what we're going to do is we're going to go outside and we're going to build it and see what happens when we start floating this primary neutral connection. So now that we've got the transformer bank built, let's go over the connection real quick. So if you remember, we've got our one, three, and five bushings all going to A, B, and C phase. We've also got our two, four, and six bushings all tied together, and here I've got them going down to the circuit neutral. And obviously you're not going to build them like this in the field, but I've got the ability to float it right here. I've got my one, three, and five bushings on my secondary side all tied together, and those are gonna be my common neutral. I've got my two, my four, and my six bushings all coming down, and those are gonna be my phases. So let's energize this bank now, and let's see what our voltage is. So on our first phase here, I've got 121 phase to neutral. And on my second phase over here, let me see, I've got about 119. And on my third phase, and this one's usually a little bit off, it's like 126. So phase to phase, I've got about 214, about 210, and the last phase to phase is 211. So now that we've got our baseline voltages, let's see what happens when we float this primary neutral connection on this YY. So 
So our voltage is phase to neutral about 149. We've got phase to neutral. And this one about uh, 145. And phase to neutral on my last phase is about 144. So phase to phase, I've got about 208, 220, and about 217. So what's going on here? Why did the secondary voltage increase as soon as I floated that primary neutral connection? Well, it has to do with the impedance value of each one of these cans. When the primary neutral was tied down to the circuit neutral, the difference in these impedance values didn't matter a whole lot. But then when I shifted that and I floated it, what I ended up doing was changing how the return current is going back to the sub for each one of these transformers. So follow this with me. I've got current coming in on A phase, right? It's going through this transformer coil. It's coming out on, on the number two bushing, going over, going into the number four bushing, going through this primary coil, and then going back on B phase right here. And it's doing the same thing on C phase. So since this transformer's coil is now in series with this transformer's coil, and also vice versa for that one, in regards to how the return current is going back to the sub, these impedance differences matter quite a bit. And what we see on the secondary side is a boost in voltage due to those different impedive values of each one of these transformers. So how much of a secondary boost in voltage are we gonna see? Well, it's gonna vary somewhere between about 10 to 20%, and it's all gonna be dependent on how far apart your impedive values are on each one of these cans. So regardless of all of this, all you really have to remember is why, why you always tie. And this is why.